Tonight, as we mark the World Health Day, we will be addressing concerns in the health sector in Nigeria, even as reps prescribe compulsory five-year local practice for Nigeria-trained doctors. And African nations reiterate requests to join BRICS amid ongoing global political woes. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. A bill to prevent Nigeria-trained medical or dental practitioners from being granted full licenses until they have worked for a minimum of five years in the country has passed second reading in the House of Representatives. With the Nigeria's healthcare system plagued by massive brain drain with a mass exodus of medical doctors and other skilled workers, the House of Representatives passed for the second reading the bill to stem the worrisome tide. Honorable Ganiyu Johnson, who raised the motion, expressed concern that it is only fair for medical practitioners who enjoy taxpayer subsidies on their training in locally, uh, local institutions give back to society by working for a minimum of five years in the country before exploring their skills abroad. Now, as we mark the World Health Day, the Minister of Health, Osage Ihanire, has said health systems can only function with healthy workers, improving health services coverage and realizing that the right to the enjoyment of highest attainable standard of health is dependent on their availability, accessibility, acceptability and quality. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Tunji Abdul Hamid, a public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining us on the program, Tunji. Thank you for having me, Agaji. Good evening. Okay, we are hoping to be joined by um, a medical practitioner later on in the show, and we do hope that when he comes, we can just bring him to answer the questions that we have for him. But Tunji, um, let's look at what the Re House of Reps has proposed, that if you are a locally trained medical practitioner, you should practice for up to five years before you're given a license, so that even if you have to, like we say these days, jackpa, we know that you have put in five years. It's like, you know, uh, going to school in Nigeria and you have to do a compulsory one-year uh, service to your nation. That's what they're proposing five years for, for the medical practitioners. Let us get to hear what you feel about this proposal by the House of Reps. I, I got you that that would be unfair and it would be a breach of their fundamental rights. That's section 34 of the Constitution of Nigeria as amended. For me, I am not unaware of the intention of that bill, the intention to ensure that uh, we, do, we don't have a, a, brain, drain any longer, a brain, brain drain any longer. Uh, I, I think for me, that uh, particular law will amount to discrimination, it will amount to breach of fundamental rights, and it will be unfair on the part of those medical doctors for them to be put into what I call compulsory and forced labor. Because that, that to me, that, you, that, that means you are, you are making me to work where I do not have intention of working, or where I have no choice that I have to stay put. Uh, for me, I, 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 it's a breach of, of the fundamental right. Like I said earlier on again, uh, I am aware that uh, medical doctors are moving out of the country, not only them, even lawyers are moving, bankers, so many other of them. And uh, the reason behind it, I don't know why the, the justification for saying medical doctors must stay five years, apart from uh, they want to cover brain drain, I don't know. Because uh, most of these doctors have, did not go to school for free. They, they may argue they will subsidize, sub subsidize. So if you subsidize, subsidize, it is not only them. All, all universities in Nigeria will be said to have been subsidized. It's not that if, if you went to school and read law, you went to school and read accounting, you read any other, any other, any other uh, courses, you have benefited from the government. So you should be forced to work uh, wherever the government feels you, you should be able to work or, 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 or work in Nigeria. I, if, if I also look about those who have been trained by government, how about those who, who went to private university that they pay a uh, money they, they pay fee for their for their training without any sort of uh, 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 government uh, contributing anything to it in, the, in terms of uh, uh, so, uh, what, what they call it a subsidy or uh, subsidizing the, the fee they pay so uh, for me it's unfair it will be unfair on the medical doctor it will be unfair on the on the on uh, 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 it will be a bit of the fundamental right i expect the government to look at why do we have a why, why, why are they running out of the country? Why are they going elsewhere? Uh, the, and this, the answer is simple. For me, this, the, answer, the question is that there is no conducive environment in this country. There is no, there is no uh, uh, enabling environment. There is no 
uh, equipment or facility for them to be able to work with. There is no money commensurate with their, what they are doing. People, they are not being paid. The, the money they are being paid cannot take them home. Talk about feeding their family or feeding them. So, but if I will, I will support the B, if, if, if there will be a clause in that B, that will say within that five years, what they will be paid will be commensurate to what they will take abroad if they are travel abroad to go and do their, uh, to offer their services to, uh, abroad. They're asking them to stay put for five years before considering whatever they want to do, even if they have a position abroad. So before they go there, it will be unfair and will be a, a bit of their uh, constitutional uh, uh, right as far as I'm concerned. They, they should also not only look at uh, them staying back, they should also look at why are you going back? Uh, why are we, are we traveling? And in that regard, if you if to say what they have been paid here is, is what they complain of, I expect the government to also make that uh, uh, payment commensurate with what is obtainable abroad. Most of these people who are talking, they, 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 most of them will be in a position to send their abroad, uh, children abroad to go and practice. Thereby, they will avoid the service of five years in the country. They, also, they can also put in that law that, look, any child or children of any, any, anybody who has had office in this country should not go abroad for any training or, or after being trained in Nigeria or anywhere in the world. He must come back to Nigeria to, to work for five years before going out of a, uh, before, before he cannot decide where to go to. That will, be, will make it fair for me. If the law applies to every, every, everywhere, that is accounting law, and other people, even the, and even the twenty, even if when you study abroad and you are in Nigeria, you must come back home and come and, and come and do that five year compulsory the medical uh, practice. And then I will see it as a fair uh, law in that regard. But as it is today, as far as I'm concerned, it's a breach of fundamental right, it's discriminatory, and it's unfair on the part of the medical doctor. We're being joined by a, another guest that we promised earlier, but before we, we bring him on, let me just ask why is it really, really uh, unfair? Because as far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing that is happening in the uh, National Youth Service Corps. You finish your four years or your five years or your seven years, as the case may be, and you are, uh, permit the word, forced to serve the country for one year. And you cannot go out and use whatever you're using because uh, you have not served, if you have not served that one year. So is it because it is five years that it is so worrisome or even the NYSC can be put into that same mold and said to be a draconian? It is unfair on the fact that one it, it's made five years. If you are talking about NYC, it, it applies to everybody. Whether you read medicine, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are you read accounting, whether you read this and that, you are bound to go for NYC once you are within the, the age bracket. And then uh, when you say uh, it must be five years uh, for medical doctor alone, then it, it, it's becoming discriminatory and therefore it's unfair. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, making it compulsory for them to say, look, you must come and do this service in this Nigeria for five years. Not thinking of what, how will they survive? What is it? What is it? What are the facilities provided for them to be able to train? Some of them travel not because of the money. Some of them travel because they want to acquire more experience and they want to acquire more knowledge because what they, what they needed to, 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 to work in Nigeria are not available. So it's unfair on, my, on, the, on, on their part for them to say, look, only medical doctor must spend five years after service. Study is compulsory and it's part of the curriculum. It, that, that should not be part of the curriculum for everybody. It's just only for them. So that, that makes it discriminatory and that makes it unfair. So if it's not discriminatory, I would not say it's unfair. Because it's discriminatory, it's unfair because it's not, it not only applies to medical doctors, not everybody. The NYC applies to every uh, courses in Nigeria. And uh, like I said, I want them to also extend it to anybody who trained abroad if they want to go down route. To say, look, even if you go abroad to train, uh, to, to, to train as medical doctor, you must come back to Nigeria. Once you are in Nigeria, you must do five years before you go anywhere. Because that is, that is the sort, sort code they will be using. They, they have the ability to send their train abroad to go and train. They will not say they are sentenced because they didn't train in Nigeria. So they, will, they want to. So uh, uh, to me, as far as I'm concerned, that's my own. In as much as I, I don't, I don't want us to have a, a brain drain. Uh, I think uh, we should also not uh, put people in other unnecessary pressure. Post labor. In other words, I don't want to work for you. You say I must stay back and work. And uh, anyway, it will not be fair on them. And some of them may even be killer. And, and they may be to, uh, When I say killer here, I'm talking about somebody who's not willing to work. A medical doctor. You force him to work. He will just be doing whatever he likes. And then in the, in the process, he may not even practice the, he may not even practice the business uh, the way he should be practiced. And then people it may resort to the, so many other uh, unconsequential uh, 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 negative effects in that in that in that regard. So to me, it's unfair because it, it does not apply to everybody. It applies only to a category of people, and it's not it's not it's not it's not general. NYC is general, and then that that cannot be compared okay. with NYC because it right. only this only applies to okay. what's it called. Th to, thank to, you, thank to, you very much. We're being joined by uh, um, Dr. Robinson Ebi, Chairman of the Nigerian Medical Association, River State. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Ebi.
Dr. B, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we're hearing what is happening in the House of Representatives where uh, a bill is being uh, read and debated and passed for second reading uh, to make sure that every doctor that trains in Nigeria will have to put in five compulsory years before they can export their talents to anywhere else in the world. How is the enemy taking that? Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'll be very straight to your question. You have called this law a bit of uh, being draconian. I would say this is modern imprisonment and modern slavery. And the enemy is not taking it very lightly. We are taking it very seriously and we are vehemently against this raw law. We are vehemently going to oppose this law. We will take them to court if it needs to get to that extent. Well, this is just the second reading. Then it's going to be the, um, co um, the, the committee stage and everybody will be invited to be on the table and we are going to discuss this matter. So that law is not acceptable by the Nigerian doctors. We reject it in its entirety. We reject the concept to which they have been able to to put this law together, and I think that um, um, this is quite unfair to the medical profession. In fact, it is what is going to be another killer machine for the medical profession. And no matter what they think, it's going to be counter and counter productive. Right? And uh, your barrister and the explanations he has given to this, it's against our personality, it's against our creed, it's our mother, the health sector, the more for putting up this law today. We seem Can to you hear me? Yeah, we seem to be having a problem. Okay, go ahead, please. All right, so for putting this law together, we say we are vehemently against this law and then we reject it. In fact, the ideology of NYC is quite different from this, uh, this law that is trying to imprison medical professionals. The ideology of NYC is for national integration, is for nationalization, and to bring the, the unity of this country to serve our country. But this is going to tell people that have been trained, that have the specialized skills, not to serve people, not to move out, not to explore the world. Even in this area of a global village, then they are trying to murder the medical profession. And the Nigerian doctors will stand against this law. You cannot, you cannot tell us not to travel until after five years of that. However, I must say categorically that even the doctors that are living are not even the only doctors are living. Senior registrars are so not even only the young doctors. So, so the, the irony of thinking that if it's only the young doctors that live in the country is available to find brain drain or whatever is acceptable. There are causes of brain drain and we have not been able to sort out the factors causing brain drain. And you're coming to imprison people. I wonder what kind of society will conform to such a thing. We know that our services are measured in terms of quantity. And then people are ready to buy our services more than what you are offering. If you want to be, if you want us to be in the country and serve you, then raise up your game. However, medical education in Nigeria is not free. It's paid for. There are people that are still on loans trying to train their children and work in medical school. There are people still trying to pay loans. Parents still trying to pay loans. Parents uh, out of their uh, uh, Dr. Abi, do Dr. Abi, just a moment. Uh, the argument, yes. one of the arguments is that um, 
the medical doctors in Nigeria go to school with a, some kind of subsidy from the uh, government. How far does this subsidy go if it does come to you as medical? I, I have not seen any subsidy in terms of medical training. That is the universally, universally acceptable, um, um, as, acceptable fees that are being paid by every student. It is not peculiar to medical students or to medical education. Government for infrastructures and across board is being subsidized, both in education, in healthcare services, in transportation, everything owned by government is subsidized. Then, what about those that have gone to private university that have paid heavily for this medical education? We are they also subsidized? We are the fees also subsidized? We are there any form of control for the private universities on what they charge? For medical students, medical students pay as much as three, five, six million per session in private, uh, in private, private um, uh, um, universities. As much as three, four, five, six, seven million, depending on the university. What subsidy? Parents pay. Parents take loans and make sure that their children undergo this medical education. So that ideology that medical education is subsidized is, co is complete fallacy and it's not acceptable to us. Okay, uh, let me just uh, ask you this. Um, people go out of the country not just because of, uh, well, maybe everything is related to greener pastures, but some people go because they want to further their education. Some people go because they need to go and join their loved ones. Some people go for very various reasons. But some other people go because of the conditions, the working conditions of, or, or, that exist in Nigeria. Now, the complaints have been that a lot of things have not been put in place to make the profession or to make the practice of medicine in Nigeria very comfortable. That's why some people are going out. If that is the case, what are some of those things that are lacking in Nigerian medical space, health space, that will make a doctor to leave Nigerian shores to another place to seek that which can be provided in Nigeria? Yes, um, it is very obvious. Yes, it's very obvious that it may not necessarily be for greener pastures why people are leaving the country, why medical personnel are leaving the country. Like the colleague, the, 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 like um, uh, Barista Tunji have said, it's not only doctors that are leaving, pharmacists, med lab scientists, radiographers are all leaving. So, this is not necessarily because of greener pastures or welfare related issues. However, it should be also noticed that. The infrastructure development of the country, this as this the working environment for these doctors or healthcare providers is also very, very questionable. Now, what healthcare financing has been an issue. Most of the health sectors are underfunded. And when they are underfunded, the, the, the management of those health facilities have not been able to put in place necessary infrastructure to enhance effective healthcare delivery. So I want to just enumerate that healthcare financing has been a very serious challenge. Power is a challenge. Security is a challenge. I can go on and on and on and on. So apart from welfare-related issues and greener pastures, these are some of the other um, inferential circumstances that affect the uh, the human capital flight or the, um, the, the uh, that pushes a medical and healthcare provider to leave the country. So some of these things are not in place. Most of our public sectors are not funded. In fact, let us cast our mind back to the COVID era. Nigeria witnessed even a reduction in the allocation of funds from the federal treasury to health, even during an, a, a, a pandemic. It's as bad as that. It is as bad as that. The Nigerian um, um, health care funding has never grown above 15%. I've never. It's, it's, in fact, it has always been between 5 and 6% of our gross um, uh, budget. Our budget allocation to healthcare has always gone below 10%. As again, the WHO uh, uh, recommendation. So how do you get universal health? So some of these things are, are, are the issues. Meanwhile, the environment is not comfortable. Meanwhile, other participations and other things that they put in place is not in place for them to function. And then they need to really go out and also um, um, get other specialized uh, training for themselves. 
The training environment is not conducive. There is no adequate training. There is no adequate fund for research because there is nothing you do. You cannot separate medicine from research. You cannot separate medicine from research. So medical education is research based. Where is the research funds? Where are the funds for research? These are the questions. So it is not only in fast, uh, it's not only welfare. It's okay. not only green and pasture. We have issues with world funding. We have okay. issues with satellite manpower training. We have issues with security. We have also issues with community participation and others and others and others can go on and go on. So these are the issues surrounding the 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 the, the, the or fueling the brain brain we see today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me come back to you, Tunji. Um, we have agreed that, okay, there is a problem. Brain drain, if we call it brain drain, is not just people going from one place to the other to explore. But if we call it brain drain, then there is actually a problem. But we've also established the fact that it may not be the best solution to just compulsorily give five years to people to stay back and do whatever they need to do, even though some people may not even ever in their life travel out, uh, even as medical doctors. But if you say five years is compulsory, it becomes like a prison to them. What recommendations, what alternatives should be explored by the National Assembly, by the government, uh, to seek to proffer the solutions that will make the brain drain to stop, instead of five years compulsory service? Uh, 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 you see, like, for my, my step, for instance, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a lawyer. For me to even travel out for two weeks, even though the environment is not conducive, it's difficult for me. Uh, if you beg me with a visa, I mean, I will even return it to you for two weeks. So it will anywhere it was, because uh, it will affect you. So if you, if you make the environment conducive, in terms of providing the adequate facility, security, and then the money is there to survive, to, to, make, to, 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 to complement what they are doing. In other words, you see a medical doctor who is a consultant who has been in practice for 25 years, to pay school fees of 250,000 naira is a problem. To pay to pay to, to, to feed his family is a problem. And you expect that kind of person to stay put and when it's yeah, there yeah, is another opportunity somewhere. For example, now we're even talking about the, the younger ones. It's not only the younger that are traveling. The old ones are traveling. 25 years in practice, 20, 30 years in practice. And for me to even think of uh, for them to even think that uh, when you are young, that's when you are not supposed to travel. It's, 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 it's wrong. That five years you are using Nigeria, you have you have built them enough. That's when we are, supposed, we are supposed to benefit from their experience. That's when you are not importing them outside, or you are allowing, allowing them to go. So for me, what they need to do is not about anything. It's not about forcing people to, to do compulsory uh, labor or uh, a slave, uh, another slave trade, uh, uh, another slave trade uh, uh, work. What they need to do is to ensure that, look, yeah, we have a conducive environment, a, a, a medical a situation whereby those who are, who are the president, the, the minister, the governor, the, the attorney, or whatever, can stay in Nigeria and attend, and attend those uh, medical facilities. If they, that, that, that is it. If, they are, if, if it's that conducive enough, that if, if, if for example, a governor built a, a world-class hospital, and he has a, just a minor edict, he's abroad. That means there's no confidence in that, in that system in, the, in Nigeria. So that's, they are also telling us that, look, we don't have trust in this system. We don't have trust in these medical facility here. So, so if they provide enough medical facility, if they make uh, uh, the, the salary, commensurate with what the people are brought to pay and make them, uh, everything uh, uh, proper. Nobody wants to travel and go and survive in paper somewhere and then start uh, leaving family. Some, some of them go as fast, leaving their family in Nigeria. They will be there. The wife will be in Nigeria. He will be abroad. Do you think anybody like that? No. They're because they, 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 they have no choice. They have to move out and, and, and get more, 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 more things to, to be done. Even in Nigeria, you cannot even get more experience because the advantages are not there for you to be able to get that experience you're looking for. So if they don't want them to travel, it's not about compulsory law. It's not about making it compulsory that you must stay somewhere. Make the environment conducive. Make the that's the solution. Make the environment conducive in terms of uh, providing their people sleeping. In fact, in terms of uh, ensuring they have a, a, a good pay. Okay. That will be enough. That they will stay back. That's just the truth. But if you say that 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 that, that will be the solution, say asking, asking them to stay back for five years, you are making them to stay against their wish. And for me, like I said, it's forced labor. It's contrary to the provision of Section 34 of the Constitution of the Federal Government of, of Nigeria. It's discriminatory. It's unfair. That is the way I see it. And it's, 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 it's that going back to the area of uh, having a, a slave, slavery. And, uh, that, and that's, what, what, that's what I think. So just make the environment conducive. That's just the solution. 
Once the environment is conducive, the, head, uh, the medical facility are there, there is nothing you want to get abroad you do not have in Nigeria, the, the pay are, are commensurate with what they are doing, then they will stay back. So you don't have to force anybody to stay, uh, uh, not to stay in Nigeria or to stay in Nigeria for five years or whatever. Like I said again, I want to repeat it again. That first five years is most crucial for them. Because that is, that is the year they get the experience more. So if you take them out within that five years, after the five years, we are supposed to be getting, getting their, 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 their worth of experiences. That's when you are now, you now allow them to go out of the country and then go and give it to people outside the country. Then it, it, it doesn't make sense to me, as far as I'm concerned. So what I think we should do, like I said, I want to repeat it, is just to just one solution. Make the environment conducive. Provide well, good welfare. Provide the good uh, uh, remuneration. Then they will stay put. That's just my own, that's just my own way of doing it. Okay, Dr. Ebi, now, um, from you, let's, let's take a final word from you. Um, if the government wants to do a revamp of the medical sector or the health sector, uh, they may not be able to carry all the, uh, all the eggs at the same time and do everything at the same time. What are some of the most pressing things, maybe one, two, three, that they need to do urgently if they want to stop this brain drain and improve the medical uh, or the health sector in Nigeria? very few of those things that we need to, uh, like they say, low-hanging fruits that must be done urgently before we look to doing the rest of the things that we need to do. We seem to can you hear me? Yes, okay, we can, can hear, you hear me. Now. Yes, please. All right, thank you very much. Sorry, the network has, been, has not been very friendly. That's all right. I want to say that first, we have to take the issues of health very critical. And thank God that today is world health day and the team for today is health for all and that means equitable health for all health without race health without status health without gender health without tribe whoever wherever you are you should have access to what effective and efficient healthcare service my dear I will say hey, the first thing I want to advocate is that there should be a law restricting every public officer, public officer, mm. public office holder mm. from leaving this country to seek health care from outside with taxpayers' money. And every public officer must use the government or public health facility in this country. Just do that for us. And let's see whether the health sector will not improve. We have forgotten in a hurry that when COVID okay. came... Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up, doctor. Yes. Go ahead. Every, when COVID came, everybody was stuck. I pray COVID never comes again. But if it does, it may be worse on us. Therefore, if that is done, then welfare will be secondary. Okay. Every doctor will stay. Everybody will be in this country and develop okay. our healthcare delivery system. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Even though, Doctor, it sounded like do me, I do you, uh, but um, it's, it's well put. And uh, we're, hope that, we're hoping that people who are concerned are listening now. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be addressing global politics as world powers come together to create their new currencies, thereby neglecting the dollar, also known as the BRIC alliance. Just stay with us.